Hi neighbors, I'd like to talk to you about Ryzen 3. Do you have a moment? All right, so right here in my hands, guys, is the Ryzen 3 1300X. It's a four core, four thread part, uh, and the turbo on this is up to 3.7. Now, this part is in an interesting spot in the market because it's cheap, and it's four cores, four threads, and the frequency is kind of, it's kind of in the middle, but you know, remember the Ryzen cores are quite a bit stronger than the old Bulldozer cores, so, you know, Zen architecture is a step up. Now, here's the deal with this part. It's not going to keep up with the really expensive parts and the parts that have higher frequencies, but for the money, you may be able to, I don't know, save a little here on the CPU if you're building just a strictly gaming PC and then put all your money into the graphics card. And then there's something that is, I'm gonna call like a neutralizer and we'll get to that in just a second. First off, let's go through all of the specs in this unit. So this is a uh, 65 watt CPU and it's got eight megabytes of L3 cache, 512 uh, kilobytes of L2 cache per core. And then uh, stock is 3.5 turbos up, like I said, to 3.7. And it, in order to really take advantage of this, you're going to want to overclock it. Now, with the stock cooler, you can push it to 3.9, we push it to 3.95, and with the right motherboard, you can push it even farther than that. So we built a little system to test this thing out. And the system uh, is, is built around the ASRock Vitality uh, B350 board. And I'm gonna say right now, do not get this board. We did not have a lot of luck with this. We went through lots and lots of different RAM, tried OCZ, Trident Memory, we tried Corsair Dominator, we tried Kingston HyperX Predator, and we could not get any of the RAM to run uh, faster than, than 2800, which is just kind of weird. We updated the BIOS. So we had much better luck with the Gigabyte uh, 350 Gaming 3 and also the Asus Prime B3, B350 Plus, I believe it is. Uh, either one of those are much better. So if you're gonna get this and you're gonna overclock it, you can even overclock it with the stock cooler to you know around four, then get one of those boards. Uh, and also, now a word from Seasonic. They did not sponsor this. We just, uh, we've had a Seasonic PSU here in the uh, office for a while. And I, you know, they sent it over and I was like, see Sonic, we will put this in a build video eventually. And we never got around to it, but I didn't notice that the price on this was so good. So see Sonic makes some of the best power supplies on the planet. That's just, if you're building computers, you just like, yeah, you see see Sonic and you know that they don't put their name on garbage. So this one's gold. The, the ripple is really small. So uh, the other thing nice about this, uh, this power supply is the price. I'm not used to see Sonic's being like this, this low in price. So, and you really want clean power when you're building a system. That's my little segment on the see Sonic. At this price, it's hard not to recommend. So if you're building a computer, grab it. Now our, our tests were run at 3.95 gigahertz. It's really weird, right? four gigahertz, you do get a little bit more power. So if we had a different board, we probably would have a different story here. But even as it is, um, the single thread is pretty damn fast. I mean, it's like modern i5 speeds for the single thread uh, with a little bit of an overclock, uh, stocks a little bit slower, but with even more of an overclock, 4, point, you know, 4, 4 gigahertz, 4.1, uh, it comes close to the single thread performance of a 4770K. So that's pretty freaking impressive. Uh, again, this is a cheaper part, doesn't have the hyper threading and all that. Uh, Multi-thread performance you can see there on the screen. Uh, not too bad for the money, actually, but you know it's not gonna keep up with the more expensive parts, obviously. Uh, next stop, moving over to uh, Geekbench. Again, there you can see our single and, um, and multi-thread. You guys are welcome to run this and compare it to your current systems. And it's the same story right here. Uh, really good performance for the money. Doesn't keep up with the way more expensive parts yet again. It's a head scratcher. All right, here's a seven zip. You guys can see the uh, single and multi-thread right there. You know, it's a four core, four thread with an overclock. Performs quite a bit better with the multi-thread right here in seven zip. So yeah, you gotta have that overclock. So right now what we're gonna do is we threw together a budget rig and we're gonna compare that to a much more expensive rig to just see, um, you know, how much performance you're losing if you're gonna go uh, with a price uh, difference that's around three or 400 bucks. So $129 CPU versus the much more expensive 8700K, it's gonna be similar in performance uh, to be fair to the 8600K and also the new 8350K in, in a lot of games. That's the new i3 that's $200, $230, depending on where you get it. So all that in mind. Um, this one with Vega versus the 8700K and the 1070. Now you can see at 1080p, this is a little bit more sluggish, but a whole hell of a lot cheaper. On ultra settings, you're still close to the 60, but you're not quite at 60. Just turn down a couple of the effects and you'll be completely fine to game on this. Now moving up to 4K, we have a different story here. Now 4K 
the CPU is not really as relevant. It's mostly going to be the graphics card. So if you're gaming at 4K and also 1440p, that's the neutralizer here, guys. Um, the CPU starts to become less relevant. Maybe there's a little bit of a bottleneck in there. And then it's mostly GPU horsepower. So, I mean, Vega, uh, even, uh, you know, uh, Vega 64, Vega 56, you know, GTX 1080, they're all going to perform kind of uh, similar at 4K. It's interesting. Now, The Witcher 3 at 1080p, you can really see um, the strength of you know, the 8700K with the higher frequency and the extra cores, uh, it just kind of muscles it around. It's quite a bit faster at 1080p. Uh, now, having said that, you're still going to be able to play this game 1080p Ultra with this card, um, and it never never drops really below. I mean, the 1% frame time is 22, but, um, you know, the minimum FPS never dropped below 45, so it's extremely playable at 1080p. Uh, and that's really the most important thing when you're when you're getting a, a budget build together. Still completely playable. Doesn't compare to the really expensive stuff. No brainer. Moving on to 4K though. Look at this story. Again, if you guys are playing at 4K, it's pretty good. The main thing you're going to miss out is the extra course for productivity and just you know some of the desktop use and that sort of thing. You may be able to. It's not going to be quite as fast, but and possibly some future games. But you know, playing at 4K. Is a big neutralizer. Now, just to mention Vulcan, I want to tell you guys how fast this plays uh, Wolfenstein. I'm going to do a quick mention of that. Uh, now, Wolfenstein at 1080p, 190 FPS. That's weird. I, that's, I don't even understand how it got so fast. But yeah, 190 FPS. Vulcan is just really freaking fast, and it likes these Vega cards. The Vega 56 in this system is really, really killing this. I have 4K, 56 FPS. So, Wolfenstein and Vulcan games like Doom and stuff are going to run really nicely on this setup. And also DirectX 12 stuff is going to run really well on this. So really this card, or this combination with the, you know, the Vega 56 and this CPU perform about on par with like a GTX 1060 or a 980 on a much more expensive CPU at 1080p. But at 4K, it's all just the graphics muscle. So if you really just want a 4K 1440p machine, getting one of these is not the worst thing you can do. If you have a little bit more money, of course, you can get something more expensive. Uh, the Ryzen 5 is going to be a little bit better, the 1500X. And also the new uh, i3 is going to be an interesting part to look at, the 8350K, because you can overclock that thing. So there's a lot to look at, but at the low, low, low price here, I can't argue too much with that for budget builds. I wish you could overclock this thing a little bit more. Like 4.5 would have been amazing on this, but you know, you have to step up the price and all that sort of thing. So bottom line here, good performance for the price. You can do better if you got bigger pockets, but if you don't, you'll be happy with one of these. If you guys have any questions, uh, hop into the um, forum and throw them in there. Also, yes, this is here. Grab some stuff. Uh, guys, the white version of the uh, standard issue mouse and also the black version of the standard issue mouse are available right now uh, on Amazon and it's Amazon Prime so no shipping for you guys and uh, we raised price like two bucks because when you do Amazon Prime Amazon takes a huge cut they're taking like way more than you can even imagine guys uh, we also sent this over to Amazon UK so stay tuned for the products to be over there and uh, last get this Vihander album and be happy We'll see you guys in the comments.